Hello. So here we are with our guest. Um, we met her because the three of us were sort of, I guess you would call us panelists or interviewees on a, on a, on a live streaming show. Um, and just connected with her and really excited to hear her story. So I will introduce Rachel Atiemo Obeng. Welcome. Oh, nice to be here. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being here. We're so excited. I'm excited too. I'm so glad I got to meet you. Other show connected. Oh, so it's awesome. So we, we um, you, you're obviously you were adopted. Um, where, how old were you? Where were you? Like, what's, what's your story? So I was just a baby when I was adopted and I was, I was born in Detroit in Southfield, which is like a suburb of Detroit. And I was adopted through Lutheran adoptions oh, and you. oh, nice. And, um, parents are from Midland, Michigan, which is about two hours or so north of Detroit. And they were unable to have children of their own. So they decided to adopt. So first, my brother was actually adopted. He was also adopted from the same agency. And then did me and we're both from the same area. We're not related by blood, but we're both from the Detroit area. And, and uh, yeah, okay. Ahead, yeah, sorry. go ahead, Louise. And what, your brother, was he younger or older? And how did that come about? He was all baby. For him, he already had, like, his biological parents already had children, but they were unfortunately not able to take care of him when he was born. So they put him up for adoption. Okay. And um, so have you, how, how was your life growing up? Like, did you know you were adopted? Was it talked about in your family? I can remember I was like five or six. I was in my little, I was in the hallway and I was like dressed in my ballet leotard. I must've like, I, I, I can see it in my mind, you know, <laughs> I must've like just gotten done with ballet or going to ballet. But I remember my mom talking to me about it and saying, you know, you're adopted and kind of explaining it in a way that I could understand as, you know, a five, five, six year old. And I was just kind of like, okay, like, <laughs> you know, it's when you're that, it's just like, oh, okay. But then like, as I got old, we talked about it more and they had told me that they were going to give me the information, like all my paperwork and everything when I turned 18. But me being the little detective that I am, I'm searching for it. And I found it in the basement in a safety deposit box, like all of my information, including a photo of my biological mother. Wow. And yeah. How, how old were you when you found this? I like maybe like 13, yeah, in middle school, like middle school age. Mm -hmm. And I found the address to where they lived. I wrote them letters and mm -hmm. yeah, I, I didn't hear anything back from them, but you know, I wrote them a few letters just like about who I was and <laughs> I don't even remember what I, but yeah, I wanted to make sure that they knew that I was, you know, thinking about them and did, yeah. um, did your parents know that you did that? No. Okay. They did did they still, did, in hindsight now, do you know that they got these letters or did they even live there at the time? They got the letters. I uh, actually was able to find them on, my grandmother reached out to me through Facebook in 2010. And she told me that they had got, gotten the letters, but they didn't know how to respond to them. It was like a shock to them, obviously. I mean, <laughs> unexpected to have, you know, to receive those kinds of letters. But yeah, they cried. She said they cried. My biological Aww. mother and her cried. And it was just really emotional. And they just didn't know how to respond. So they didn't. So, and how long was it from the time you sent the letters until she reached out to you on Facebook? years. Oh, many so years. You went, man, you went all these years with nothing mm -hmm. until you many, get a Facebook message. Yep. Did, did they feel, um, since you've known them now, did they feel that they would have disrupted your life or because you were young that they weren't supposed to contact you or that, were they just more like, Oh my God, in shock? 
they're in shock. And I think also the thing is like nobody else in the family even knows that I exist. Um. So I'm kind of, you know, I'm kind of the family secret. So I was born, my biological mother, her name is Wendy. She went to a home for girls who, you know, get pregnant and like she had the baby like in the hospital with just my grandmother and one other person and nobody else in the family even knew that it happened. So how old was she? She was in her early 20s. Mm. And so and so you were like, are you still the family secret? Um, as far as I know, probably to some, but I did reach out to other family members that I found on Facebook. I reached out to um, great uncle, my grandbrother, mm-hmm. and um, we talked for a little bit. And then I reached out to my biological mother who was on Facebook and I had reached out to her prior, but she had denied that that was her. But then I was like, I know this is you. This is obviously you. That's when she was like, okay, let's talk on email. And it just did not go well. Like she was very hostile to me. Really? She, you know, yeah. She's like, you have your own family. Why are you bothering my family? How dare you contact my uncle? She was just very hostile. She also, you know, made it known that she was raped and that's how I was conceived. Oh, wow. So, oh my gosh. So there's a lot of trauma there mixed in for sure. That must've made you feel, how did you feel hearing that? Yeah. (laughs) You know, it was really bad. Like I was devastated because I just, in my mind, I envisioned like this great reunion where I got to meet, you know, my mother and she, she greeted me with open arms, you know, but that's just not how it went. And she was very angry that I had reached out and that was very hurtful to me. I was actually like, I was at work when I received these emails from her and like my coworkers, they knew my story and everything. And they're like surrounding me, hugging me. Oh gosh. I'm so sorry. Did anything, has anything changed since then? Um, my grandmother, she has stopped talking to me. I have not heard from her since 2010. Like the emails stopped. I actually got a lot of information about like who I am and like who the family is from our email correspondence. Um, And that's just, that stopped. My uncle stopped following me on Facebook. It's kind of like Wendy shut it down. You know, like she just was like, no, no more. I don't know what to them, but the contact is, it's done. Like it's, there's no contact anymore. So I was going to say they probably, your grandmother probably wanted the relationship with you since she gave you so much at the beginning and talked to you and then was told, eh, stop. Did you, do you have siblings? Um, I know that my, that Wendy, she has two kids from, I don't know if they're married. I think they're, she's married. Um, I'm not sure if they're her biological children or if they're her partner's previous marriage, but I know that she has two kids. Wow. Have you gone on um, Ancestry DNA? I've done the Ancestry DNA. I haven't really found like close relatives, just like, you know, distant, distant cousins, like not really anyone who's, you know, that close, but it's kind of cool just to do ancestry, just to see like your lineage, your background. And yeah, I found out a lot about myself. I'm basically like, I'm like half of Africa. Um, (laughs) And (laughs) What and like just, Irish and British and wow. interesting. I wonder, um, how do you feel about your biological dad? Because that's a whole ball game then that's like a different playing field for this situation. Like if you found him or if he came up on ancestry or or do you know anything about him? I mean, or do you want to know anything about him? I guess that's a loaded question. I really don't know. I don't know anything about him. I don't know if I ever will. I'm interested in knowing that side of the family because like just looking at pictures of Wendy's side of the family, they look dif- like I have some of the characteristics, like I look a lot like her, but mm-hmm. as far as like skin tone goes, they're like lighter. And so like the, the, my father's side must've been, you know, dark because I'm kind of like, I don't know, 
in between. I don't know. So it's just, I don't know. It's interesting. It's I'm interested to know like what they look like, you know, like what characteristics I got from them. And another cool thing is my mother, she was a special needs teacher for 10 years. And I didn't know that. I started working with needs children in 2009. And that's what I got, had my master's in is applied behavior analysis, working with children with autism, which wow. is really cool. It's like, you know, it's in my blood. <laughs> Isn't that bizarre? Yeah. That's Finding so that bizarre. stuff out that is works. nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Gosh, that's really neat. I was a teacher actually. And, and when I went to be a teacher, my mom, my adoptive mom told me, you know, your biological mom was in school to be a teacher and she was also a teacher. I'm like, why didn't you tell me this? Aww. She's like, you know, we wanted to see what you would become, but that's a weird, it's, uh, it's how a that strange. works out. Yes. <laughs> Rachel, um, you said that your records were in a safety deposit box. So I'm guessing Michigan did not have the stringent rules that other states had, because we only, Louise and I both only had non-identifying information. Yeah. So you, it seems like your parents had all the information was it, and it was through Lutheran children's services, right? Mm-hmm. So that's interesting. Uh, it, Michigan must have Sarah. had yeah. more lenient laws. Yeah. There is a lot of information in there, including like my background, like um, heritage, but doing the ancestry, like it didn't really match up, which is funny. Um, But yeah, that was all in the address. As I said, a photo of Wendy that she had given the um, agency and wanted me to have, which is, I think that's very sweet. Um, She actually named, my birth name was Rachel, Rachel Elaine Gillespie. And my parents decided to keep it. So I think that's special too. Yeah, I do too. I like that. Well, and obviously, I mean, at that time she, she did care and she did want you to know who she was and stuff, but I'm sure just the, tra- you know, the trauma, like she had to seal yeah. off something. I don't know. Right. Yeah. And that like, at first I was upset, but then, you know, thinking about it, I'm like, wow, she's really hurt. She has a lot of hurt that she hasn't healed. And yeah. obviously like yeah. I'm a trigger to that, you know? So I can't really like, yes, the things that she said to me, they weren't, you know, necessary, nor were they kind, but at the same time, it's like, it's not, has nothing to do with it. It's just her, you know, deflecting her pain Mm -hmm. and her hurt not healed. So I can understand that. That, that takes an incredible amount of healing on your own part to be able to see that and, and not internalize it, not feel bad. I mean, it sounds like you're a really strong, healthy, passionate, healthy person. Um, I have a lot of, that's just amazing. I have a lot of respect for you for that. Yeah. I don't yeah. think most people would ever would be able to do that. You know? No, I don't either. I think a lot of people have, have a lot of deep anger and triggers from that themselves. And here's another thing. We, Sarah and I were speaking to a, a woman recently that we interviewed from ancestry and she said, you know, sometimes it just takes time too. Mm-hmm. Like you never know as people soften and age and maybe she gets the therapy she needs or you just never know. I mean, it's probably right. a long shot, but <laughs> I mean, you never know. She could, she could come back around or a sibling might want to reach out to yes. you or, That's what I was you know, say. something yeah. like that. So, um, did you ever then end up telling your parents about the letters like later or and are you close I, to them? And I did my mom is actually done okay. like her whole family tree. And so she's really helped me kind of look into my. Oh, we froze. Louise, you should put pause on the recording. So did you ever end up telling your parents about the letters you'd sent and the contact you had and all of that? I did. And, you know, they were okay with it. I think they were kind of shocked that I, I actually found everything. Because <laughs> <laughs> they, they don't gave- understand the investigative powers of a doctor. I was going to say, we <laughs> right. just keep hearing this over and over. Yes. And over. <laughs> right. 
and it's funny because like when I did turn 18, they gave me the stuff, but I had already seen it. So it's like, (laughs) (laughs) you had to feign surprise. Like, Oh, you know, but, (laughs) but yeah, my mom is really into genealogy and she's really like, she's done her whole family tree and she, she decided to help me with mine and she's dug into my ancestors, like using ancestry.com. And she's provided me with like this whole like book of just stuff that she's found. And she's actually, she's found pictures of my biological grandfather and my biological mother from high school. And like all this information, like my biological, uh, my biological grandfather's obituary and just a lot of information that she's pulled with which I really appreciate. I think that that's so nice that she would do that. Oh, that's me. so neat. That's really, it's kind of rare, actually. I think it's really neat. Yeah. And what about um, your brother? Like how, how's he doing with everything and his adoption? And does he search or did he have the same information given to him? That kind of thing. He really has not, like, it's something that he's just not really interested in searching or yeah. pursuing. Like he just kind of, he's just living his life how it is you know like he's not really like doesn't have that that drive to really know as much as I did um about his background does he have kids my brother yeah no he doesn't it's he that seems to always be the impetus for men that Mm -hmm. we've interviewed that having their for having a child then spurs them to want to know more about themselves are yeah, you, maybe. were you close growing up, you and your brother? Yeah, we were, we were only um, a year and a half apart. So we would, you know, play together all the time. And just like, we go on family vacations all the time, like road trips around the United States. And like him and I would just, you know, Aww. make up songs <laughs> in the back of the car. And like, <laughs> we're just very silly. We're, we're both very musical, which is, uh, my mom is an artist. My dad is also a singer and I'm a singer um and a I'm songwriter and yeah we just all really had you know that in common as a family and my brother and I like really embraced that we both were in piano lessons we both you know we like to sing and make up as I said make up songs together and oh. imagine like we used to play this game called bud I'd be like hey bud he's like hey bud I'm like what you doing <laughs> bud I don't know bud I'm like <laughs> just like silly things <laughs> I, love, so, I, I mean, it I sounds like you bond. had a pretty a good family life growing up. Did you, and, but yet felt the need to seek as we all most. Yeah. We, uh, we were very fortunate growing up. Um, we traveled a lot. We got to see a lot of the world and instead of our parents giving us like material things, they would take us on trips. We'd go to different places like educational places like That's Gettysburg fast. and we went to London as a family and my dad traveled a lot for his job so we would just go with him like even as like babies there's pictures of me here in California on the beach with my mom like holding me and my brother she's holding my brother's hand and we're on the beach in Santa Barbara That's we great. really got to yeah we really got to see a lot of the world at a young age so I'm fortunate for that Oh yeah. You had a great family and that's, it's huge. And I like that they're supportive about your, I mean, they're open about your story and they're open about your adoption and helping you find your roots. And I mean, that's actually, I think that's so healing, especially with your situation with your, it's going to be really, um, were they aware of the circumstances of your mother's concept, your birth mother's conception? Were your parents aware of that? Or did that, was that an unknown until you spoke to her? They, well, apparently she said that she didn't, she told the agency that she didn't know who the father was, but the caseworker kind of felt like she might have, yes, she might have known who it was, Um, but she was just kind of saying that she didn't know who it was. Um, I think that they knew that to the extent of what it is, like that, you know, it was not consensual. I don't think that that was no, you know, at the time, but. That's yeah. hard for her at her young age. It's big mm-hmm. stuff, you know. Very yeah. layered, and um, yeah. I mean, I imagine layered for you. When, as your mom is doing the family tree, there's nobody from your biological father's side that she's found so far. 
No, it's mostly just on my biological mother's side. And it, it helps because, you know, she already has like information from that side. It's just like, it's absolutely like, there's no information on my biological father's side. There's none. We don't even have a name. We, it's hard to even search when you have like no name. Like she, I think she said that his name was like John or something, but I mean, it's like, come on, like. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And, and even, it, even yeah. in those weird distant matches on, on that's how that's I ended up sense. tracking. Cause I didn't, you know, my birth mother was adopted. So that was kind of a dead end until, and I would, anybody I match with that wasn't already a match from my biological father's side, I would, uh, reach out and they're like, do you know, so-and-so no, no, no. <clears throat> so, but there were matches. I just couldn't figure it out. It took me a long time. Yeah. I'm going to have to go back in there and really look. I've talked to some people here and there who have been like six cousins, you know, like <laughs> oh, those are, that's hard to track. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we shared a great, 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 you know, <laughs> if you start digging in, it's, it's, we've just recently been digging in more. There's stuff that pops up like randomly where you might get close, you know, because there's probably mm -hmm. some cousin, there's gotta be somebody on his side that's gone on ancestry. That's closer than, you know, like in the first or second cousin realm right. i would think probability but you never know maybe not I mean, it's just... yeah there's a lot that you can like you have to go back way back sometimes to find that information and yeah yeah i would say that i know my mom she's a great detective herself for going back in there and like just finding all the things that she has found it's pretty amazing yeah. like, even photos photos of my biological grandfather from high school like that's amazing that is from, amazing. were they in Michigan? Was he in Michigan? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so crazy. <laughs> yeah. It's weird. He's actually, yeah, he's actually, he was adopted and he's actually half black, half Portuguese. He was a very oh. handsome man. He oh, has I like bet. eyes and like sandy hair. He's just very handsome. <laughs> this was, this was your biological grandfather. Yes. Are they, is he still with your grandmother? No, he passed away. And, um, I can't remember when, but yeah, he passed away and. And so is, has, is everyone, you're not friends with them on Facebook anymore, or it's just pretty dormant. I'm not friends with anyone on Facebook. I did reach huh. out. I reached out last year to my grandmother, just Facebook messaged her. Didn't hear anything back. So, you know. That makes me sad because she's, yeah. she's such a wealth of information and probably wants to, yeah, what it sounds like. She just really seems like a very loving and wonderful person. And it was weird because when I was living in Michigan, before I moved here to Los Angeles, I was actually working in Farmington Hills, which is where my fam, my biological family lives. So it's like, I'm right here so close, but yet so far, you know? maybe she you know maybe they'll maybe it's it'll just take more time and they'll come around eventually i hope so i really I hope do. so too me too yeah but in the meantime i i admire the way you handle it and your strength and God. resilience and adoptees are resilient aren't we resilient <laughs> people it would seem yes, yes we are <laughs> we have to be you know yeah it's like heavy yeah. stuff Deep it is. Heavy stuff. It, it's deep, heavy stuff for sure, which is sometimes really hard to explain to people that haven't been through it. Mm -hmm. I had a situation yesterday where somebody said to me, um, somebody I know who said she knew somebody adopted and they were having some problems, you know, with the adoption. He was an older boy or whatever. And then they found his biological mom and things were messed up there. And he's better now because he knows how lucky he is on this. And I was thinking, well, <laughs> right now he is, but that's never really going to like inside. He's, he's going to have stuff for a long time. I mean, life. So, but I couldn't even explain that. You know how it's like, you can't get into that conversation. It's always that word that, that lucky, lucky, lucky. It's just, oh. it's, and, I know it just drives me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> You're so lucky. It's like, Oh, <laughs> I mean, we, you know, we've said this often on the, on the podcast and Nancy Verrier said it in her book and uh, you know, adoptees are the only trauma victims that are expected to be grateful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, because I mean, we have amazing families and we are lucky, but you're also going through. Well, a not everybody thing. does, though, Louise. No, right. <laughs> but I'm saying the three of us have loving families and, and, you know, long term, it's, it's going to be a thing for this, this child that she was talking about. I was like, okay, well, right now he's feeling really good because this happened and he's a teenager. I mean, he's going to have a thing forever in his, you know, soul that he has to work with. So, but you can't really explain that to the outside world. It's a strange, yeah. it's just an, an adopted community situation to talk about. It's like one of those things that like every day, you know that, like you, you feel that like I'm adopted, like on a day that goes by that I don't know that, you know, yeah. yeah. it's one of those things that you just can't put out of your mind. Yeah. Like it's, it's always going to be there. That's a fact you know not to say that it's one of those things that you can you, you should dwell on like oh i'm adopted but at the same time it's like it's part of who you are it's part of your mm-hmm. identity and it's exactly. always going to be there always yeah well you're just a wonderful guest and person we're so excited to know you i feel like we have a new friend anyway through all our <laughs> our, last, <laughs> our, our shared experiences right? <laughs> that's our shared Francis, yes. yes. <laughs> our, that's our little inside joke. <laughs> Thank you so much, Rachel, for joining us and, and keep us posted on if anything changes. I would love to yes, please to know what's going on. And I when I'm next will. time I'm in LA, maybe we can all meet I up. I would love that. Yeah. Absolutely. We would, would love to great. see you. That yeah. So much for meet up for lunch or coffee or something. Definitely. Yes, for sure. Oh, we'd love it. Okay. Well, and thanks again thank for you. coming. Thank you for having me. You guys are great. And thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.